folks, we are back. And if you missed the first part of the show, we have been talking about craziness, really. That's what's been happening since uh, Donald Trump's inauguration or Donald Trump's, uh, what would you say, lead up to presidency, his, his switchover. Uh, and we've been talking about how the left culture had really an opportunity to, to build, to grow, to develop, to do something phenomenal. And unfortunately, as we've seen, not blanketing everybody. I've got to make that very, very clear. But I also can't deny the, the unequivocal evidence that's there. When people do interviews, unfortunately, this is what the, the representation for the leftist community is looking like right now. With people having misinformation, with people having dumb information, with people not even knowing the information, and people coming away with really, really stupid stuff. Uh, like shaving their head in protest for Donald Trump and shouting and screaming at children. It just doesn't look good. It really doesn't look good. It isn't good at the end of the day. And how this affects people in mind, body, and soul perspective. Okay, so we get, as a balance this, now bear in mind, folks, I keep saying this, I am, I'm, I'm, I try to be central. I look at the good, I look at the bad from both sides of you. You know, folks, I have nothing good to say about this leftist uh, ideologies right now and this culture based on what i've shown you and based on what i've seen this week it just doesn't look good it's like we didn't get our way wow 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 that's what it looks like and it's sad it really is sad and my hope is that people will show and, and see and hear this and actually say well hang on a second maybe he's right maybe we do need to represent our communities better because maybe people would actually care more and actually be bothered about us rather than us shouting and bawling and screaming all the time that doesn't get you anywhere Check out this video uh, before, <laughs> and we'll move on from this topic. The new bill that President-elect Donald Trump wants to introduce on day one. Trump claims that the bill will recognize gender as only male and female. They are only male and female. He also said that the bill will ban men, per his definition, from competing in women's sports. Um, as it should be, because in the day, a man is someone with a penis, a woman is someone with a vagina that was born genetically so even claims that they'll be investigating big pharma and others which he doesn't specify who but to see if they've been illegally promoting hormones and puberty blockers okay so big pharma doctors uh psychologists psychotherapists mental health professionals uh nurses etc etc i i would say that's and, and he does actually say who so let's continue he even made specifications around education and children his yeah, because guess what? The the leftist culture did that and added drag queens in in Canada to do, what was it, something story time or whatever, where you could be a drag queen with horns and go on in to, uh, into children's schools and behave in, in very, very indecent ways, teaching children how to masturbate at five years old and having your testicles dropping out of your trousers. Uh, and all of that is factual. This Department of Education will promote the nuclear family and teachers who suggest that what the heck is a nuclear family? Is it as a family that just goes boom? What Donald Trump is actually trying to do is to promote the family environment, which is something that feminism, and it's been clearly shown, uh, is, is trying to destroy. It's trying to destroy the family environment. It's trying to destroy, in certain parts of the United States, if your child runs away, they legally become the property of the state. What the heck was going on in, in Harris and Biden's administration? Very odd. Continue. Children could be trapped in the wrong body could face sexual discrimination lawsuits. Okay, so let's talk about this. So what Donald Trump is actually saying about children that are trapped in the wrong body is not that they are forever bound and chained to be in the wrong body, but he's actually trying to work out and having his team work out who really has gender dysphoria and who doesn't. Because guess what? I, I can't see young lady, young, you know, I'll be respectful. Young, whatever you want to be identified as, pigeon, penguin, ferret, whatever, whatever you like. I don't, I don't really mind. Um, what he's trying to do is understand who genuinely has gender dysphoria and who doesn't. And the more concerning thing about it is why men who are mentally, and it has been men, unfortunately, men who are mentally disturbed sex addicts are having these horrendous operations with the view to raping women in gyms, in sports clubs, in sports bars, in swimming pools. Why do you think less and less people are actually wanting to go to gyms, to public... You know, again, it's like this was by design. This didn't happen by accident. This was never addressed, really, to my knowledge, with Biden-Harris's administration. Where is the protection? 
oh, I know. Let's 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 create a good a good thing that happened over here in the UK. We will put men inside a women's prison. Uh and that's fine, is it? No, no. So, uh, sweet mother of mercy. Of course, he said he wanted to celebrate the roles of mothers versus fathers. I don't. What? 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 What's the problem with celebrating the roles of mothers versus fathers? What? What is the issue with that? You know, what is the issue that she's taking with this? I, I don't get it. I, yeah, uh, someone tell me, please, because as far as I'm concerned, women's roles are as important as men's roles. If a woman is a homekeeper and she's taking care of the house and she's taking care of the family, that is a major, major role. And historically speaking, that is what the woman did. Equally, if she's going out to work and the man's taking care of the children, that's still phenomenal from both points of view. So I don't understand what what she's she's um, griping at here. Is there anything else? I don't know what that looks like in his mind. In in his mind, um, yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's more concerning in her mind than than anything else. But moving along, folks, because I said we would. There's been some um, more <laughs> concerning things this past week. Could there be anything more concerning than uh, this culture that we've just been talking about? Uh, apparently so. It has come to light and uh, unfortunately it has been verified by yours truly because I've spent the last couple of days actually verifying this, that Kamala Harris has been buying votes. Now this was first speculated back in the original Biden-Trump race for politics, uh, what, four years ago. And um, that, that, you know, a lot of people had said that Trump didn't actually lose, that it was all rigged, it was doctored, and, and there has been a lot of stuff about that. But it has come out that Kamala Harris um, allegedly, we'll go with allegedly, uh, at, at this point in time, because I don't feel comfortable using the phrase, but it's been covered on enough programs and things that 10 million has gone to Beyonce, 5 million to Megan uh, uh, Thee, I think how we pronounce it, Stallion, uh, 2.3 million to Lizzo, uh, 1.8 million to Eminem, 1 million for Oprah. Um, and it's been seen that she was actually buying votes. Now, not only is that illegal, that's highly concerning, uh, the fact that that has gone on and that's happened, because then you start asking, well, is it really a democracy or... Are you buying people to become influencers for you? It, it's not a case of, do you really support her or do you not? It's now become a case of, can I just buy you? And this next video shows um, uh, some stuff that's a little bit more concerning. I personally feel, hand on heart, after doing extenuating research for the last four years, that the right person is in office um, and from what we've seen today already, and I know this has been a bit more of a, of a sort of a ranty episode. I think it has to be. Um, but from what we've seen so far in, in today's show, it's not surprising why I think a lot of a lot of people in America are glad that Trump won. Uh, and and the, the facts and figures are showing that. And, and this next video may, may sh spread a little bit more light on that. Check this out. I'm Bruce Springsteen, and I'm here today to support Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. In a stunning revelation, the campaign of Vice President Kamala Harris has been exposed to be in a state of serious financial disarray, ending with a staggering $20 million in debt, according to sources familiar with the matter. This financial strain has cast a dark shadow over Harris's failed presidential bid, highlighting the reckless spending and questionable decisions that plagued her campaign. According to Politico's California Bureau Chief Christopher Catalago, the Harris campaign's debt surfaced in its final desperate days, as insiders pointed the finger at campaign manager Jen O'Malley Dillon's extravagant decisions. The campaign's aggressive and expensive ad strategy, including high-profile concerts featuring stars like Katy Perry, Lizzo, Eminem, and Bruce Springsteen, were intended to energize young voters but ultimately proved to be a costly misstep. Despite Harris's campaign reportedly raising over $1 billion, with $118 million still available as of mid-October, the campaign spending spiraled out of control, leaving them scrambling to address the mounting deficit. As one staffer told Breitbart News, Jen O'Malley Dillon blew through a billion dollars in a few months. The record-breaking spending, however, failed to translate into electoral success. Harris's team and Democratic allies channeled around $1.4 billion into political ads, outspending Trump, 
and his allies by nearly $460 million, according to Fox Business. Yet, this massive financial investment did not secure key swing states, but despite outspending her opponents in these crucial regions, the financial edge did not result in victory. Okay, so, you you may be sitting there thinking, okay, what the heck does that mean? It means it's spent a lot of money. Now, I went and did some deep dive research, and from three sources, uh, Christian Post, uh, Megan uh, Kelly, and Straight Arrow News, um, it has been verified, and it doesn't look good. I mean, it doesn't look good. I mean, it's, it's the, the fact that you, you can spend so much money and then, of course, you're asking the question. So you've got investors, you've got fundraisers, but if you can't manage your own budget, and this has come up a number of times in Kamala Harris's sort of role and uh, over the years, if you can't manage your own money, then how the heck are you going to manage a country's money? How are you going to, you know, help a country? Because all they did was put up the prices, up and up and up and up and up. And you start to ask the question: How on earth is it that people in this leftist culture? And this leftist way of life can sit there and say, hand on heart, yep, I believe that she is the best person for the job. If my eyes had been plucked out, and my nose had been hacked off, and all I had was two ears, and, and my, my ear or my brain had sort of been syringed with a hot poker, so I couldn't differentiate between voices, and all I had was the facts that both Harris and Trump's administration was, was putting forward, I still, still couldn't vote for Harris. I couldn't. And I sat there, and I sat there for ages and ages and ages and ages. I sat there and I thought to myself, okay, right, it's going to help the LGBTQI community. What's it going to help them do? What does this mean long term? And you have to think long term, folks. This isn't just something that is going to affect, you know, your little community one time. Great. LGBTQI reigns. Woo. Hallelujah. But what, what does that mean then for the rest of the world? What does that mean for our society? What does that mean for, you know, the, the traditions, the values, the ways of life that have been built? What about for the old folks? What about for, for finances? You're complaining now that things are expensive and you can't afford things. That is a result of the Harris-Biden administration. That's the same as what's happened over here. With house prices going sky high, with inflation. Yes, I know there was a lot of other mitigating factors going on, such as the war in Ukraine, such as the wars elsewhere, such as oil, such as this, such as that. But the reality is there's so much more to these things than just your little world. And it is vital, vital that we actually are able to see this and we're actually able to respect this. The best policies are the policies that benefit everybody. And I'm not saying that Trump does benefit everybody. I'm not saying that Harris would have benefited everybody. But looking at the cold light of day, I firmly believe that Trump, believe it or not, folks, believe it or not, whether you're an, an abortionist, whether you're pro or, or um, woke culture, um, I almost said pro-life there. That's not the term that I meant, because if you're an abortionist, you're not pro-life. But if you are either one of those cultures, believe it or not, I think Donald Trump has your best interests at hand. Why? Okay, before we go to commercial break again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break this down very simple to you. So, because a lot of you will say, oh, no, you know, absolutely he doesn't. Just listen. Okay, please just listen. If somebody genuine has gender dysphoria and they are looking to go for a sex change or a gender change, whatever it is that you've labeled it as now, I have no idea anymore because it changes all the time, then that means you are going to go through years and years of ultimate misery. You are going to be on hormone replacement. You are going to be on all manner of drugs. You are then going to have, if you're a female, your breasts chopped, and you're going to have huge scars that are probably going to need plastic surgery. And it doesn't matter how great a plastic surgeon is, you're still going to have scars. You are then going to have a penis attached to you. 
And essentially, it is going to be like a rod that has a button that when you press it, it gets erect, and when you press it again, it goes floppy. To convince you in your state that you are a man. Do you spot that there could be some form of mental health issue going on here? There is. As someone who has worked in various industries, but specifically that industry for the last 15 years, I can honestly say any client that I worked with that had genuine gender dysphoria also had bipolar or anxiety or schizophrenia or multiple personality syndrome or fill in the blank. And more often than not, when we broke it down and we were actually sitting there talking, it wasn't that they wanted to become a man or a woman, but it was oftentimes if they were a woman, they looked at men and said, well, men have got it made. Men are amazing. Men are great. I feel more like a man. And I would always say, well, how do you know? How do you know what a man feels like? You've never been a man before. And they said, well, oh, wait, you can't answer that question. And I would say to the guys, it's like, you know, tell me that the, they're a woman. I was like, how do you know? How do you know that you're a woman? You have been a woman a day in your life. Oh, uh, hmm. just just a feeling, just a feeling. As we talked about in last week's show, your feelings can manipulate you. Your feelings can delude you. Largely, your feelings are a conditioned response from the society that you surround yourself with. And the problem is you've got more people now that are going to support you in your decision than really actually pull you aside and say, what's really going on here? What's really happening? Because what scientists and therapists and psychoanalysts and psychotherapists and philosophers, not philosophers, um, psychologists are understanding and discovering now is that more often than not, people that are going through these issues, as we talked about, watch last week's show, please watch last week's show, so I don't have to spend all this time just talking about, but your brain is flip-flopping around all the time when you're a teenager. And for some people, it just doesn't settle until you're older. Sometimes you feel more masculine, sometimes you feel more feminine. Right, fine, great. But that doesn't mean then you start doing this irreparable, irreversible damage to yourself. And there are more and more people. For every single hundred people now that have these procedures done, there are so many of them that want the procedure undone. Because guess what? And it's always the question that I end with. If you're going to go through with this procedure, my question to you is what happens if it doesn't work? If you don't feel different afterwards, what happens? What what then? And it's something you really have to look at versus a culture that is going to say, yeah, you be who you are, sweetheart. You go, you go, girl. You be who you want, sister. They're not looking for your best interests. Harris was not looking for your best interest. Nicola Sturgeon over here was not looking for your best interest. Guess what they were looking for? Voters. And why were they looking at voters the same way that the church would often look at prostitutes, alcoholics, drug addicts? Because unfortunately, they are vulnerable and they are easier that when you see and you try and you want to have supporters, well, they're easy votes. They're easy votes. They don't give a you know what about you. Simple as that. If you didn't fit into some form of ideology, they could care less about you. And the reality is, I firmly believe that, believe it or not, that Trump, by saying we're going to limit people's access to this, but we're going to look at some form of mental health thing. We're going to stop de destroying the lives of children. We're going to stop the mass extermination and abortion laws that are going on. We're going to stop this. We're going to reduce this. Things have to change. Because guess what? If it doesn't change, human beings will not survive.